Thank you, Lakshmi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, and a very warm welcome to each and every one of you, no matter which part of the globe you've joined us for. This is day four of the first ever virtual summit of Finical Conclave. I'm sure you've enjoyed the first three days as much as I did. The rich experiences, the insights and perspectives of so many practitioners from across the industry. There are too many highlights from the first three days to recount here. But I think if I can summarize that, three main ideas resonated with me. First, that in 2021 and beyond, digital adoption is going to really accelerate. Second, those institutions and banks that were already on a path to digital transformation before COVID are better placed to not just navigate the challenges, but indeed to leverage the opportunities that will come along the way. And last but not the least, I think the brute reality that every institution today has embraced the perspective that relentless customer obsession is a path that they cannot deviate from. I'm certainly looking forward to listening to the perspectives of so many more colleagues and friends over the next two days. And thank you very much again for the time you've chosen to spend with us. The year 2020 has been difficult for everyone and it certainly left a very profound impact on all of us. I don't intend dwelling on that too much, but it's probably worthwhile to spend a moment to reflect on the role of the banking industry. You've had the difficult task on the one hand to manage your own business, but to also fulfill the social responsibility that rests on the banking industry as you help individuals, companies, and indeed communities navigate through these difficult times. And I'm sure you'll agree that the banking industry has shouldered this responsibility admirably. The whole concept of organizational purpose received a lot of attention even before COVID. And I dare say in the last 12 months, this tone has been sharper and indeed it has reflected across industries, not just in the banking industry. A KPMG survey conducted last year showed that more than 77% of the organizations today are taking a very close look at their organizational purposes. And this is going to make a very big difference to our activities going forward. The reality of COVID is well known to all of us, and I certainly don't intend dwelling on this. But no matter which commentator you follow or which, in, which industry report you read, I think there are some important points for us to note. And I'm going to call out two particularly. First, that there's a great urgency today in our set of activities. But second and equally important, that there is a compelling need to transform. Both of these combined are going to be very important in the way we navigate and find our future beyond COVID. We conducted an industry survey last year along with EFMA, and there are some very interesting observations that came out of that. While indeed many organizations had started digital transformation well before COVID, the truth is that barely 7% of the organizations had deployed digital transformation at scale. What was more worrying, in fact, was that over one third of the organizations had barely started, which means they still have a very long way to go on this very important journey. Scaling digital leadership clearly requires actions on several fronts. What can the industry do? What is it that we need to focus on? Let's look at some facts. If you look at the very important aspect of customer journeys, barely 20 years ago, over 50% of the transactions being, were being done in the branches. You come to modern times, and over 95% of the transactions are being done through digital channels. Looking forward in the not too distant future, we expect that more than 50% of the transactions will be done through third party channels. Let's, look, let's re look at the way digitization has reset benchmarks as far as the very important cost to income ratio is concerned. At the start of this decade, it was perfectly respectable to have a, bank, a cost to income ratio in the banking industry of 50 to 60 percent. You come to modern times, and the top 1,000 banks in the world today have a cost to income ratio of just around 50 or slightly lower. In the last few years, we've seen many digital-only banks being set up. 
they operate at a cost to income ratio of around 20 to 25 percent and that's being driven down further. We expect that going forward in the not too distant future, many banks will start looking at a cost to income ratio of around 30 to 40 percent. And this will be done through a variety of means, workforce and workplace transformation, smarter business processes, and greater adaption of digital. In our survey of banks last year along with FMA as part of innovation retail banking, there were some stunning observations that were made. 700 of you responded to the survey. And what was telling was that you expect that innovation in the near future to really come from outside the banking industry. You expect leading technology companies and digital commerce platforms to take the lead as far as innovation and banking is concerned. More importantly, while over 59% of banks said that they'll remain universal banking institutions, around 40% were beginning to move into other areas of changing their focus. And we're going to look at that in the coming few slides. I think it's fair to say that this trend of banks moving away from pure universal banking is only just picking up. And in the next few years, we're going to find that ratio dramatically changing. So clearly, nothing less than a holistic business transformation is the need of the hour. So what should banks do? How can business transformation be translated into action? We're going to look at this across three dimensions in the next few minutes. Let's start by rethinking the business model for the digital era. There's no one-size-fits-all approach, and indeed banks can adopt a variety of approaches. If we start with core competency, banks are going to have to make a choice of where they will choose to excel. Will a bank use its large size and the muscle that comes with scale and really be a size leader? Will a bank choose to put its entire focus on differentiating through customer experience? Or will it be one that focuses on relentless and ruthless execution of efficiency, efficiency in its operations so that it becomes a cost leader? On the other hand, it may choose to focus on other aspects of its value stream. It may deploy and leverage technology to be able to self-create a lot of products and therefore becoming a manufacturing powerhouse of an array of banking products and services. On the other hand, it may curate a marketplace where it brings to the table a whole host of offerings, not just from its own stable, but from third party partners and solutions. Or it can be distribution focused, where the focus is on ensuring that the distribution is done across scale and to ensure that the experience of customers, no matter which channel they choose, is seamless and outstanding. As I said a few slides earlier, this is an era of digital channels. Or indeed, the bank may choose to focus on a channel-led approach. Either you go down the route of being only a digital institution, or more likely, you have many channels, but it's focused on a digital-first proposition. So what are we doing at Finical to support this? This is a fairly busy slide, but I'm going to help you run through this succinctly. Let's start at the bottom left hand. Across the many difficult digital product engines, we put the power and the capability in your hands to be able to do one of two things. Either you self-create products and you put the power of configuration in your hands, or you choose to align with third-party partners and solutions to be able to bring a wider array of propositions to your clients. On the other hand, we recognize that we are not going to be able to produce everything for you. And therefore, we create the ability for you to have an ecosystem where there are pre-integrated solutions which you can take to the market. All of that is, of course, done through a middle layer, which is the Finical Digital Engagement Hub, which allows you to provide consistency of operations and consistency of experience no matter which channel the customer chooses to use, whether it's a bank-owned channel 
or a third party channel. The leveraging of business APIs allows you to access resources and access services from third party solutions, but equally it allows you to bring capabilities from third party solutions into your fold and make all of this available to your clients. Many of our customers have already done some remarkable work in this journey. Let's take a few examples. Marcus by Goldman Sachs, when they did their foray into consumer banking, a lot of their recent focus has been towards the proposition of banking as a service. And some of the partnerships that they've announced recently, whether it's the Amazon or Apple Card, really resonate because I think this is a journey they're going to take forward of creating a banking as a service and making a very different proposition available to its customers. Then you take Paytm, the payments powerhouse in India. They offer a true marketplace where they bring to the table both financial and non-financial products to their customers. And last but not the least, you have Live, the digital bank from Emirates NBD, which has created the world's first lifestyle bank and it operates at a cost to income ratio of barely 20%. So you've seen three different propositions by three different institutions in three different parts of the world, each equally important. But more importantly, it demonstrates that by leveraging technology in your chosen area, you can really make a big difference to your clients. Let's move on and look at how organizations can scale capabilities to bring a completely new value to their customers. We look at this across three dimensions, people and culture. As we've all seen in the last 12 months, in many organizations, including ours, workforce transformation and workplace transformation is already underway. But we think even as this transformation continues, banks and other institutions are going to be focused on trying to find a way to ensure that they are able to create a uniform culture across a more dispersed and a widespread workforce. So this is certainly going to be an area of interest to watch. Let's look at processes. Processes are going to be lean and mean and sharp, but they're going to fundamentally focus on, I think, two dimensions. One, they're going to be catered to facilitate rapid innovation. And equally, they're going to support a lean and mean operation, an agile way of working. Support for rapid innovation on the one hand and a lean and mean operation on the other is going to ensure that your processes are fit to purpose, but more importantly, that they provide you a time to market advantage in whatever you choose to do. And last but not the least, technology and data. The fact that the modern ecosystem is going to be built around cloud, is going to be built around APIs, and it's going to be built around the fact that in an ecosystem, you're going to work with a lot of other uh, network, pa network partners is going to make a big difference. And that's a reality going forward. So what are we at Fenical and Infosys doing to support this? Let's start with people and culture. Wingspan is our industry application to enable personalized and contextual learning. As we've all seen in the last 12 months, on-demand and on-the-go learning is a here and now proposition. We think banks will really pick up this. At Finical, we've chosen and we've put a lot of focus on ensuring that we have a lot of co-innovation co platforms available to all of you. Whether it's the Client Advisory Board, the Banking Visionaries Council, or indeed the FinTech Connect Council. All of these enable us to work with you and the wider ecosystem to be able to bring more capability to the table and to enable talent transformation in a manner which facilitates innovation at its very best. As far as processes are concerned, our focus has been towards straight through processing, leveraging APIs, and essentially opening up the ecosystem so that you can resort to rapid business transformation and business innovation as per your priorities. And last but not the least, Finical is an open platform running on the cloud and our journey towards cloud native and cloud ag agnostic uh, approach is going to make a choice available to you. The more important part is that whether it's cloud 
whether it's the leveraging of APIs or whether it's the leveraging of insightful analytics, these are all here and now and these are here to stay. It's no longer a matter of choice for the banks as far as these strategies are concerned. And at Finical, certainly, we are going to be con continuing to focus on all of these going forward. So let's have a look at what Finical clients have done in this area. An assessment of the top 1,000 banks globally revealed that those institutions that are powered by Finical enjoy certain advantages. They enjoy a 33% higher return on assets compared to peers, with an average return on assets of 1.2% and a top performing client at 4.7%. They enjoy 19% higher return on capital, with an average return of capital of 15.6% and a top performing client at 33%. They enjoy a 3.9% lesser cost to income ratio compared to their peers, with an average ratio of 47.2%, going all the way down to a top performing client at 16%. These are some stunning statistics. Let's look at acceleration and the value creation through delivery. So let's see what our clients are doing in this area. It's important to demonstrate value to customers, whether it's helping them to save, borrow, or invest. It's important to identify the focus area. There's a lot of emphasis around the resources being used. And last but not the least, it's important of how you, as a bank, package it. So what are some examples in this? Let's start with the bottom. We have the example of ICICI Bank in India, where ICICI Pay Later allows ICICI to embed microloans at the point of sale. This is something that's being seen increasingly in various other markets, particularly in COVID times. When you look at resources used, Paytm white labels deposit products from their industry peers, both Indian banks and multinational banks. If you look at a focus area, for example, DBS Bank, which has been recognized as the world's most digital bank, has launched a marketplace for cars for their clients. So they've moved into an adjacent area, leveraging technology, but looking at a proposition that helps create greater stickiness with their clients. And last but not the least, the UPI framework in India, where our clients are processing over 1.4 billion open banking payments every month. This shows you that the variety of means that are available to banks to make a big difference in scaling product and service, but at the end of the day, in creating more innovation. Finical has been recognized, as I'm sure many of you are aware, across a variety of banking industry benchmarking reports. On this slide here, we've got two very well-known examples where we've retained our position in the Gartner Magic Quadrant Leader Quadrant for many, many years now. Equally, on the Forrester Wave for corporate banking, we've emerged as a leader there. So we are a leader both on the retail and on the corporate side. So let's look at the different ways Infinical creates enablers to drive omnichannel innovation. As we said a few slides earlier, this is an era where more and more customers are doing a larger number of their transactions exclusively through the digital channels. And we want to equip you to create an engagement in such a manner. A lot of our focus recently has been on the digital engagement hub. Through the suite of solutions, we are creating the ability for you to engage with your clients across a multitude of channels, both owned by yourselves and through third parties. Whether it's in the process of onboarding, selling, servicing, or indeed just conversing with your clients. We think this is going to make a step change towards the whole engagement with your customer base. In the last one year, we've reimagined our customer data management solution and evolved that into an enterprise class customer data hub, which is now the single repository for all of the data that comes not just from the Finical applications, but also from third party applications, which enables you to tap into the single repository for all of the actionable insights that you intend to take. We've recently launched the new information reporting solution for business and corporate banking customers. 
This works alongside our digital engagement hub and creates the ability for not just information reporting on the one hand, but transaction reconciliation. It's already been deployed at one of the global banks, and we think that this will be of much interest to a lot of our customers. On average, Finical clients have realized a 19% improvement in net promoter score. In an era where banks and indeed every institution, even outside the banking industry, is working that much harder to retain its customer base, a 19% improvement in net promoter score is fantastic. Clients have also shown a 20% improvement in omnichannel service delivery. And you go back to the point we made a little earlier, that this is an era where more and more transactions are going to be done exclusively through digital channels. And therefore, this is the right statistics to prove the point that banks are focusing exactly in the area where they need to. And last but not the least, an 18% improvement in the ability to offer, offer personalized products. At the end of the day, customers, whether it's you and I, have a choice. And the ability for a bank to offer, offer personalized products backed by an outstanding customer experience is what will ensure that you retain the stickiness of your customer base. The industry has recognized us for this. The Forrester Wave has recognized the Finical Digital Engagement Suite as a leader in this space. And it's my commitment to you that our focus and our research and development into this area will continue very strongly so that we keep up with times and we continue to be a step ahead of all your requirements. We live in a network world. And in this era, the need for an ecosystem has become much stronger than ever before. Unlocking the ecosystem innovation opportunities simply allows the bank to bring more capability to the table and offer a wider choice to your clients. Fundamentally speaking, banks are about products, services, managing risk, and so on. We enable this through the capability of APIs, where leveraging APIs and webhooks, you're able to expose all of this through business services, either when you tap into the capability of partners in the ecosystem, or you make all of this available to your clients and to a wider, wider base. This is going to be a very big differentiator because increasingly in the network world, the winner will be the one that operates efficiently and seamlessly within the ecosystem. So what are we doing at Finical to enable this? For many of you who've used Finical, you already know that it's an open platform. In the last several months, our focus has been on ensuring that all of the business APIs are available in RESTful form so that these are exposed in a manner for you to make, make them available and for, the, for you to consume them. We operate in a lot of economies, India for example, where there are over 2 billion transactions through the UPI network being done monthly. The ability to service all of these across these channels and to make all of these services available becomes an imperative. And our focus has really been on that. We've also created the Finical App Center where our focus has been on bringing more and more fintechs and other complementary solutions to the table in a pre-integrated manner so that you can leverage the benefit of looking at capability end-to-end -end within Finical and beyond. So let's have a look at what Finical clients have achieved in this regard. On an average, Finical clients have realized a 20% improvement in ecosystem innovation. This is stunning. Equally, a 16% improvement in digital sales. And last but not the least, a 17% improvement in speed to market. As we said at the very outset, it's not just transformation, but the sense of urgency that all of us need to bring to the table. And the clients have seen that and been able to translate that into action with your end customers. So let me summarize. Our offerings and our investments are aligned to help you drive a holistic business model transformation. We are investing in creating a full suite of best of breed and best of suite digital capabilities for you. We are investing in creating the most modern cloud native applications 
built around a composable architecture. We're going to make a multitude of deployment models available to you. Whether you choose to deploy Fenicle on the cloud, or on the software as a service model, or indeed, if you choose to remain on-premise. All of this, of course, backed by a very agile delivery and an impeccable track record that Finical brings to the table. As you'll see from the right-hand side of the slide, Finical and many of you have been, have been able to reap the benefits of this through a multitude of industry awards. In fact, we are the most awarded solution in the industry today. It's a reflection of the partnership that we share, and it's a reflection of the direction that we are committing to go together. This is a great opportunity for us. It's an era where technology is front and center of everything that we do. And we have the opportunity to co-create the future of banking together. I can end by reflecting no better than the words of President Abraham Lincoln, where he said, the best way to predict the future is to create this. It's my commitment to you on behalf of Finical that we're here and will remain with you on the journey that you take in this exciting future driven by technology. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.